Welcome to day 10 of the Marble Machine flywheel prototype. The prototype is finished and I did an improvisation in the end. I've added this crank right here. So now you can power the prototype both by hand cranking it and by pedaling it with this pedal over here. One of the reasons I added the crank was that I wanted to try if it makes tighter music. But the other reason is that I think this pedal is stealing a lot of energy from the system. And I thought we could do a fun little test to actually see how much energy the pedal is stealing from the system. I'm cranking the prototype up to exactly 80 BPM and then I'm letting go and we can see exactly how many seconds the machine can still rotate with the pedal on. Hannes has prepared the analyze in the computer. Let's see how the machine is doing with and without pedal. I'm going to take a time when I release it. There. We have the time rolling. Over here we have the pedal. And over here we have the pedal disconnected. I actually thought the pedal would stop much sooner than this. So pedal has stopped there. Wow, it doesn't make a difference. I would never have thought that. They stopped at the same time. This was so surprising. This pretty much show you the importance of making empirical tests. Turns out the pedal isn't taking energy from the system. We're ready to do the tests and it's on this contact microphone where we're going to do the tests. So every time this plastic hits the mic like that, we have a transient. First official test ever. I'm going to go with pedal, lowest gear, three weight discs, and 80 BPM. Let's get this rolling. The first test is done, and now I can go into the computer to analyze the performance. So here we have the waveforms, and if we listen to them, this is the sound of the test, and here's the click. And what I have to do now is that I have to go in, as always, and manually find the peaks. So I have to do this manual operation 100 times, or do I? <laughs> During the meetup, I said in the room out loud, it would be nice to have a software to analyze the peaks because people have been suggesting that to me for two years. And Jan stood up and said, I will take the ring to Mordor. During the meetup, Jan and Tom worked on creating a software and they've already done it. Let me show you something kind of amazing here. I have exported my file. So I can drag my file and drop it onto the tool. And there's the results. A lot of people have suggested this to me. Why I wanted to do it now is that before now, I didn't have a lot of data to analyze. Now I'm going to have huge amounts of data to analyze. So this green wave here, that's the BPM. So you can see exactly that I'm trying to find the tempo. And then we have some more plots. We have the similarness plot. And then most of all, we have the standard deviation of the performance. And what we have done here is that we have chosen to look at 100 peaks. So these two dotted lines here is a section with 100 best performing consecutive peaks. So now we have a super quick way to compare the results of different tests. So let's do test 200 BPM on the pedal. Okay, we're back at the computer. Pedal, 100 BPM. 
So already the visualization of this software is amazing because it means I can immediately see with my own eyes that there's no strange error in it. And the standard deviation, we have 2.39 milliseconds. Let's check with 120 BPM. Really good section there. Let's upload 120 BPM. <laughs> planning the 2024 with God, like a meetup. Yes, they are already planning next year's meetup, actually. You can see the standard deviation, 1.57 milliseconds. We, the music is getting tighter with more moments of inertia. Who would have thought? My guess is that this will be peak because 140 BPM was so difficult to play. But anyway, we have to try it. It starts to shake and vibrate quite a lot. So I'm putting this over here just in case. <laughs> I tried 140 BPM both with pedal and with cranks, but at this speed, it's almost physically impossible to do it. So that's already a big drawback with this manual system that higher tempos are really hard to achieve. Oh, I can't do it. Ah. Ow. Ouch. Ow. First blood to the marble machine. Yeah. <laughs> this is brilliant. So much nicer ergonomically when the crank is a little bit higher. Okay, yeah, crank is better. I can already now tell you crank is better than pedal. My thesis is that the crank is tighter than the pedal. Crank 80, 3.9 compared to 101 for the pedal. Let's check crank with 100. Crank with 100 had also 3.9 standard deviation. Let's check crank 120. Three point twenty seven. According to this data, the pedal is better than crank. That's not my experience using the machine. I don't know what is wrong, either my experience or the data handling. This surprises me, actually. There we go. Okay, so according to this preliminary result, the pedal is tighter than the crank. Something is fishy there. I don't actually believe it. However, this is not a time for me to properly analyze the data. I just wanted to show you the awesome tool and give you a hint of how I will analyze these tests. So huge thanks to Jan and Tom for being so awesome and working on this awesome tool that will be extremely helpful. The whole prototype is actually finished now. It's been an amazing week in Rudesheim and I just wanted to show you the progress we've made during the week. Now when the prototype is finished, I just want to recap everything that happened this week in Rudesheim am Rhein in Germany with Siegfried's Mechanical Music Museum that has been hosting us and it's been awesome. We have almost turned down our roof by lowering this 100 or 200 kilo old chuck and that was because we were going to try some metal lathing for the first time to lathe the flywheel discs for the machine. And I have welded together a whole steel frame. By the way, this is maybe the process that worked best. Welding together the frame was effortless and the design was awesome. And then we've just been assembling the prototype. And in the middle of everything, just when we had things rolling, there was the Wintergatan 2023 meetup with a lot of wonderful people coming and watching me build live in the studio, which was so much fun. Carlos from Anjuda Guitars was there and 
it was beyond intense. <laughs> I think me and Hannes has done 10, 16 hours days in a row at by this time. It gave a great result. We have a prototype working now. And most have gone to great plan during this week. However, the lay thing, the turning, I mean, sorry about that, <laughs> has been pretty difficult. And the turning of metal is the first process that I'm trying for the first time ever. All the other processes, like welding and assembling stuff, I've done before. So the metal turning actually created most problems this week. But that's normal with a new process. There's always a bit of a learning curve. But so much fun to turn metal on a lathe. Oh my god. I just want to go back and do it better. We had this issue where the chuck wasn't actually on properly. So you can see how loose the whole workpiece is. And that just meant that my results were bad. This is Miro who helped me MIG weld uh, the, the frame while I was turning some metal. So while Miro was welding, we finished the flywheel. Hannes craned it into the room. And we tried it, and it was kind of a disappointment. <laughs> However, I have another piece of metal, and I'm going to get back to do the same later to actually finish this turning properly. And look at this, by the way. They made the Marble Machine X play the Marble Machine song. Huge credit to everyone who has worked on the MMX. And then I met Terence from the TK Music YouTube channel who has actually built a functional marble machine. This is Terence who have built Hi. maybe uh, the best marble machine that can play music currently. Yeah, so it combines designs from the original marble machine and modern designs from the MMX. And I just started without a plan. Without a plan and just started building and changed the designs very often. And it's really interesting because Tyrants has managed to use a lot of the concepts from my marble machine, but uh, where I have failed, you have gotten a lot of concepts to actually work. We're looking forward to uh, seeing uh, more of the instruments come to life. Yeah, thanks, Brucey, yeah. and hopefully it will work. And the uh, madness uh, continues. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, this is also some kind of marble machine. It's uh, round, kind of inspired by the animation of Pipe Tree, if you uh, remember that. Yes. And uh, it's controlled electrically, so over MIDI, so it can play basically anything you want. You can play on the piano, but I can also uh, play here on the computer, for example, the marble machine song. That is so cool. Yeah, it needs some time to, to get the marbles back up again and it's not working perfectly right now, but so far it's working quite well, I would say. And I mean, it's functional at least. And also the marble gates are basically inspired by the MMX. I first started with a pinball marble gate, which uh, didn't really work out for me as it always got stuck. And then I moved on to the uh, clock escapement marble gate, which is now working more or less so good. You had uh, more success with the clock escapement marble yeah. gate as well. Yeah, they are great. That's what I'm going to use for the new machine as well. Yeah. So Alvi here has built a flute and to reach the lowest note, you have to put the flute half open against the leg. So let's hear it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> Next step now is to change the weight of the flywheel and change the gear and redo all these tests with the different settings of the prototype. That's what the prototype was built for. So these last days in Germany, I'm going to gather as much data as I can and then I'll take the data home to Sweden and analyze it properly. And then we'll find out. So far, where I'm sitting today, None of this is going good enough for me. 
I will need to see if I can make a desktop version of a Hugen chain drive. If that doesn't work, there will be no more marble machines. <laughs> but I'm not going to jump the gun. I'm going to look at the data properly in Sweden. But currently, none of the solution is good enough. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.